Hi all, welcome to Geeks for Geeks. Let's talk about today's a very interesting topic that is recursion. So, what do you mean by term recursion? Recursion simply a two step process. The first step is function calling itself, right? Second step, until we met a specified condition, right? Let's understand these two steps. In this in this coding part, right? Let's see this part first. Here we are having a main function. Inside this main function, we are calling a function which name is f, right? Now the control goes back to this f function, right? Inside this f function, we are again calling f function. That tell us that function is calling itself. It means there will be a recursion in this function, right? And second step is until we met a specified condition, here, here we have a base condition. It means it just simply tell us that where we have to stop, right? Where this function have to stop, right? So this part we can understand a bit later. Now let's understand this topic within given example. So in this question first, we have to print the numbers from one to n, right? One to n. For example, in this case, we are given n equals to five. It means that our required output is 1 to n means 1 to 5. So our required output is 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, right? We need this in this manner, right? So here we are using a stack function which is called recursion call stack. Inside this recursion call stack, the first thing we have to encounter with the main function. Let's write the main function inside it first. Now. We have, we are calling f of n and our control go back to this f function. Inside this, n value is 5, right? Now, it means that we have to write here f of n minus 1 first, right? Why n minus 1 we have to write first? Because we need 1, right? Just compare these two things. You have n value as 5. You need this. 5 right now? No, I don't need right now 5. So we have to call again this function, right? We have f of 5 inside this recursion call stack. After that, this function is again calling, right? So inside this, n is 5. Now we have 4. We are calling f of 4. You need f 4 right now? No, I don't need right now. So let's, let's write here in the function call stack. Again, we are inside this call. So I am writing f of 3, f of 2, f of 1. Now I am calling f of 0. Here is the stopping condition, right? 0 is not include my required output as you see here, right? So it means that that condition when n equals to 0, we have to stop. We have to stop. It means that this is your base condition. This is your base condition. When n equals to 0, we have to return. We have to stop in that part, right? In this case, now this function is over. So its control goes back to f of 1, right? Now I want 1. I want 1. So after control go back to f of 1, I want to print it. I want to print the n. In this case, my n value is 1. So I got 1. I got 1, right? After this function f of 1 is finished, control back to f of 2, right? Now I want 2. So after this function finish, now my n is 2. So it's print 2, right? It's print 2. In the same manner, function go back to f of 3 and we print 3. Again, f of 4, we print 4, f of 5, we print 5. After that, it goes to main and our function will stop and we are having our required output. We are with your required output, right? So hope you understand this. So one thing I want to tell you, like if I am not writing my base condition, what will happen? For example, f of 5 I am writing here, f of 4 I am writing here, right? f of 3 I am writing, f of 2 writing, f of 1 is there, 
f of 0 is there, f of minus 1 is there, right? And we go further more, take okay, infinite times. What will happen in this case? What will happen? Forget about what we want, just see it like what will happen. There will be a runtime error. We encountered with runtime error. That name is stack overflow error. Stack overflow error is there. So let's understand what is stack overflow. For example, we have a like glass of water that height is 15 centimeter. It means that we can fill water inside that glass up to a level of it, right? But what happens if I add water after the height of the glass, right? It will overflow. It will overflow in that case, in the same manner, our recursion call stack, our recursion stack is also having some specified memory, right? In that case, if the infinite loop is there, that memory error will be there. That error is known as stack overflow. In my stack, it's overflow, right? That's the case of it. So let's do some another example to understand the recursion. So here our second example is print n to 1, right? In this case, we have to print n to 1. For example, my n is 5 in this case. So my required output is 5 first, 4, 3, 2, up to 1, right? So how to do it? So in this case, again, let's start with the recursion call stack. Inside this stack, we have main function first, right? Let's write it. Now I have f of 5. Control go back to this function. I have f of 5. Let's see. I want 5 right now. Yeah, I want it. So let's print the first statement. Our first thing is inside this function, print n. So I just print n. I have 5 right now. After that, you want 4? So after that print statement now, I have to call a function again with n minus 1, right? You understand this pattern? In this case, I have f of 4 in my call stack. Now I want 4, so the print statement will be there first. So I am I am getting 4 in this case. Again, this line came, which is f of 3 f of 3 calling, the first statement is print. So I am printing the statement 3. After that, I am encountered with this f of n minus 1. Here n is 3. So we have f of 2. So we print 2. Again, I have f of 1. Again, I am printing 1. Again, I have f of 0. So I don't want 0 in my output. So here it means it's a stopping condition. When if n equals to equals to 0, we have to stop here. We have to stop here, right? After that, our control go back to f of 1. In that case, just see, after this function, we have nothing. It means simply we go back to f of 2, simply go back to f of 3, again f of 4, again f of 5, and main function, and we have our required output. We have our required output. Okay, hope you understand this question. Let's do some another question. So our last question of this video is given a number n. Okay. We are given a number n. We have to print nth Fibonacci number, right? So let's understand what's the meaning of Fibonacci series, right? So Fibonacci series is a sequence where each number is a sum of previous two numbers of the sequence, right? The first two numbers of the Fibonacci series are 0 and 1. Okay, and are used to generate the Fibonacci series. So here we want nth number of the Fibonacci series, right? So here the recurrence relation is f of n equals to f of n minus 1 plus f of n minus 2. So Fibonacci simply tell us that 0th number of Fibonacci is always 0, right? And Fibonacci number of 1th position is always 1, right? If you want f of 2 now, so it will be f of 1 plus f of 0 as f of n is equal to f of n minus 1 plus f of n minus 2. So here n is 2. So n is 2. So f of 2 minus 1 is 1, right? And f of 2 minus 2 is 0, right? So we can easily find with this relation, right? 
which is 1 plus 0 which is 1. Okay, so how to solve this question using recursion? Let's make a dry run of it. So in this condition, we have fib of n, right? Let's write it. So here n is 5. I want to find number at fifth position, right? So we don't know at what is at fifth position. So its recurrence relation is simply f of fib of n minus 1, which means 4 plus fib of 3, right? Let's store f of fib of 0 is 0 and fib of 1 is 1, right? Now, let's find f of 4. What is f of 4? f of 4 is simply f of 3 plus f of 2, right? Now, what is f of 3? f of 3 is f of 2 plus f of 1, right? fib of 1. What is f of 2? So, fib of 2 is fib of 1 plus fib of 0. We are encountered with our that function call stack which we already stored our value, right? So, fib of 1 is 1 and fib of 0 is 0. It means that fib of 2 is, let's store here, fib of 2 is 1 plus 0. It means its value is 1 now. Let's update this one. What is fib of 1? fib of 1 is 1. It means that fib of 3 is 1 plus 1 which is 2. Now let's update fib of 3 which is 2 and fib of 2 is already we stored which is 1. Now fib of 4 is, let's write fib of 4 which is 2 plus 1 which is 3, right? Let's write here 3. Now fib of 3 already we have which is 2. Let's write here now fib of 5 is 3 plus 2 which is 5. In this manner we are able to find fib of n, right? So in this case we simply we have to write a base case which is if n equals to equals to 0 or n equals to equals to 1. In this case simply we have to return n, right? Else we have to write the recurrence relation, right? Which is fib of n minus 1 plus fib of n minus 2, right? So this is all to solve this question. I hope you understand this intuition. Thank you so much.